who said the big three era is over? Uh, it, it doesn't get much bigger than getting David Aldridge. I mean, in the middle of free agency, who better to have than, as Vinny just called him, the dean of NBA coverage, David Aldridge. My son's favorite 2K reporter, David Aldridge, from The Athletic, David Aldridge is with us. <laughs> hey, uh, DA, this just happened, I mean, not even five minutes ago, it feels like. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Man, I, I look, I give the Wolves credit. They are, their owners and new guys, Mark Laurie and, and Alex Rodriguez, they have been trying to make a splash for a minute. They wanted to go big, big, and <laughs> they went as big as you can get, <laughs> <went> right? <big. laughs> uh, yeah, right? So, you know, like, I'll, it, it is a, it's definitely a game changer for the Timberwolves. They got a taste of the playoffs last year, and I'll give them credit. They have not been shy about, hey, saying, hey, we, we want to be in this for, we want to be in this, in, in this Western Conference picture for a while. We do not want to be a, a one in, a flash in a pan, one and done, and you don't hear from us again for another eight years. So they are all in with Rudy Gobert and with 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 Cat and with uh, Anthony Edwards. I mean, it's wow, they're very good. You know, they're very, very, very good. I think, and certainly will be among the the favorites in the Western Conference now going forward. Now, Vinny, this you've been, is a, you've been pumping this, the brakes. Okay, I'm about to say mm -hmm. you've been pumping the brakes and pouring water all day. Do you like this move? I'm, I'm not so sure what to expect. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I, no, I think Rudy Gobert is one of the most, probably the 10 most impactful players in the game. I think, you know, because he's not a back-to-the-basket player, we tend to underrate that, but his impact on defense, especially for a team like that, where Carl Anthony Towns is not a guy you want in the back line of your defense, now you slot him to four, where he's taking nine threes a game anyway. He's playing like a power mm -hmm. forward regardless. So this makes mm -hmm. it easier. DA, I'm far more interested in the goings on in Salt Lake City. And I've never said those words in concert before. <laughs> far more interested in what's going on in Salt Lake City. But Danny Ainge is taking the sledgehammer, shall we say, oh, yeah. to, to the roster. Is Donovan this, Mitchell next, and where is he going? With a 34-year-old coach. Yeah, this can surprise warmer, you. Warmer, this can't surprise you. Our not boy Danny Ainge did this in Boston. He was like, Danny is – one thing Danny is not is sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> Danny is not a sentimental dude. So he is taking a blowtorch to this thing. <laughs> and, and, yes – I just tweeted out Donovan Mitchell pick up the white courtesy phone, you know, because you know mm -hmm. this. You know, <laughs> mm -mm. No, I mean this is it, it's obvious. I mean I don't know. You certainly can't expect Donovan Mitchell to want to stay now, even if there was any chance of him staying before. There's no chance of him staying now, right? So, so surely he'll be on the move, and and just just as we're seeing with with KD, as we're seeing with John Collins. Now with Donovan Mitchell, line up your offers because, because the bazaar is open, you know, and uh, it could be Miami. Sure. I wouldn't rule out. I still wouldn't rule out the Knicks because they've always had a, a hankering for them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of and it, it, look, every team will win Donovan Mitchell. He's, he's a hell of a player. Um, so he could he'll have any number of suitors. They'll have any number of offers. Um, you know, Atlanta, well, Atlanta, probably not for Donovan Mitchell since they just, just got the, uh, DeJounte Murray, but, but certainly Atlanta can help facilitate a three team deal. They've got a lot of pieces. If they don't go all in on Durant, they certainly could facilitate a, a Donovan Mitchell trade somewhere else with a lot of the assets that they have in, in place. And, and until we know exactly where Katie's going, you know, Phoenix kind of just is in suspended animation with their pieces. Indiana's got 30 million now in cap room, so they can take anybody in that they want. They can they can take it any max deal that they want. So, Vinny, look, I agree with you. Um, it's it's odd that the NBA has kind of leaned in. They love this, by the way. They can talk all they want. They're gonna find take a second round pick away from the Knicks like that matters. You know what I mean? Like, I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote three years ago, these tampering rules are stupid. Just get rid of them. Just let everybody tamper. Just let everybody put whatever offers they want on the table. The day after the finals ends, it's the wild, wild west. Anything goes and they should, and I don't know why they continue to keep pretending like there's some, you know, like these rules have any meaning when we all know everybody's cheating. I literally, 
I literally asked around. I said, is there anybody, is there any team that doesn't cheat? And everybody <laughs> independent of one another said, there's one guy in the league that doesn't cheat, Mitch Kupchak. I've heard He's that. The Mitch one, is the one. The one Mitch guy is the one. Yep. in the NBA yep. that sticks to the rules. Dean, <laughs> Dean Smith is proud. Dean Smith is looking down <laughs> proud. Um, just quick quick uh, transactional update. So it's four Minnesota first-round picks, along with 2022 first-round pick Walker Kessler, uh, yeah. going to the Jazz for Rudy Gobert. Minnesota is sending its 2023 2025. Pro, pronounce his name, picks. Michael Smith. Pronounce the name yesterday. What was the name that, that I had you pronouncing? Victor oh, oh, oh. Wim, what? Wimbanyama. Wimbanyama. Damn, damn it, I ain't got it in front of me. I, I got. <laughs> damn it, why you put me on the spot like that? I did, Mike, Mike, just call him Big Vic. Big Vic is going to be the first pick Big Vic. <laughs> Big Vic. Big Vic. Big Vic. Big Vic. Um, San Antonio's put all their cards down already for Big Vic. <laughs> right. 2023, 2025, 2027 picks, all unprotected, and yeah. a top five protected 2029 pick going to Utah. Okay. Right. Um, right. Man, this is major. So, uh, real quick, going huge. back to um, Donovan Mitchell. Uh, yeah. Did you have a particular team in mind, Benny Goodwill? I had two teams in mind, especially when we're talking about draft picks. The New York Knicks have compiled a bunch of draft picks. Some of them protected, some of them not. You know, first yeah. and second rounders that they that they've acquired over the past couple of weeks. I would not be surprised with the CAA influence that the Knicks have with Leon Rose and World Wide West and everybody else that that's something. But I also would not be surprised if Kevin Durant goes Southwest. The Miami Heat, of course. Why wouldn't they take a player like Donovan Mitchell? Why wouldn't you take Dwayne Wade Light and and hair and bring him with uh, Jimmy Makes Butler sense. and all those guys? Because the last sense. thing that they need to make this all complete is a guy that really get a bucket. Makes sense. And by the way, Wimbanyama, I'm gonna get that. I'm a, it's, it's, once upon a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once upon a time, I took the coupon did not roll off the tongue. Say now everybody, now all a, a minute. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Now yeah, there's, some people, there's some people that can't say Moses Moody on our TV screen. <laughs> <the other> day. <laughs> Victor Wimbanyama, the, the number one pick in the 2023 draft, presumably. All right, yes, so we references we reference his name a couple of times. Man, oh man, Rudy Gobert of Minnesota. That's huge. But that is amazing. Still That's not, huge. Right. DeJounte Murray was huge. And we didn't even talk about him the yes. last two days. But both John those Collins trades is will, going somewhere. John Collins is going somewhere. Trades, <laughs> all of those trades will pale in comparison to the impact, the inevitable impact of Kevin Durant being moved. So you look yes. at what Minnesota just got for Gobert, or see, uh, uh, what, uh, what Utah just got for Gobert from Minnesota. Yes. It's like, is there a trade? That's going to make sense for Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. That matches up with where Kevin Durant wants to go. You know what I'm saying, Da? Like, yeah, like yeah, is Mikael yeah. Bridges and and DeAndre Ayton enough to get it and picks enough to get it done from Phoenix? Well, you probably have to put Cam Johnson in it too, right? Okay, so if it's mm -hmm. Cam Johnson and and Ayton and Bridges and you know, I'm sure Brooklyn's going to want the same kind of control over picks that Houston yep. got from Brooklyn right yep. for for Harden mm -hmm. so that's three first and two swaps right so you mm -hmm. you give them three uh, three first round picks in staggered years and then the in the two years in between that you would give Brooklyn the right to, to swap picks with Phoenix so then in essence they get five first round picks right mm -hmm. along with Aiton and Bridges and Cam Johnson I mean that would be <laughs> That would be pretty good, right? I mean, you can't. I don't know that there's anybody else that can give you a whole lot more than that for for even for KD. Like everybody's making offers, but that's a pretty good offer to me. If I'm trying to rebuild and I'm trying to still be competitive next year, because I don't want Houston, I don't want my first round picks making Houston a championship contender for the next decade. Right. I'm still trying right. to win. You know, Aiden and Bridges and a bunch of first round picks. I mean, that's. Probably the best I can do, whatever they get for Kyrie. I still think, I believe the Lakers thing is not dead. I think the Westbrook and two first might get it done because Brooklyn just like, look, look, let's get out. Okay. <laughs> just, just get out. We'll take whatever. Get out. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you know, 
You know, DA, two things I thought of, and I wrote it a little bit yesterday because I'd heard it, but I don't know how strongly I feel about it. Could Brooklyn stretch and wave Kyrie and just let the cap hit fall, especially because you know that how how much they maybe aren't trying to compete over the next right. couple of years? That, that's, that's basically essentially a bad contract that you would right. be well, taking I, on that, that could fall off of yeah. your books and just let him go on his merry way as opposed to taking Russell Westbrook when you're trying to rebuild, you know, your culture. And, D.A., I got a text. I got two identical texts from league executives who said to me, if Kevin Durant, if Rudy Gobert is worth four first-round picks, what the hell is Kevin Durant worth? <laughs> I mean, that's facts. That's fair. That's fair. Now, you can only... You literally can't trade like you can't trade a 2041 first round pick. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. There are limits based right. on the length of the collective bargaining agreement. So there's only so many picks the teams have <laughs> between now and the end of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, but it's a fair it's a fair point. It's a fair point. And Brooklyn is going to hold out for the absolute best, biggest offer as they should, right? Mm -hmm. For for mm -hmm. KD, and uh, it may not be Phoenix. Phoenix is the Phoenix to me is the one that's the easiest, it's the cleanest, and it does give you a very good return. You know what I'm saying? But I get it, I get it. You know, the only team that the only team that has the, the number of picks that that you're talking about is Oklahoma City, Oklahoma and of course that's a non-starter. <laughs> that's a non-starter. Right. <laughs> so, right. So there's only so many teams with multiple first round picks that they're going to put into the, even for KD, even for KD. Yeah. So again, to me, the yeah. Phoenix thing makes the most sense, but we'll see. We'll see. I would not will. I would not rule out Atlanta. I think Atlanta is trying to go all in. I really do. I think Atlanta's, I don't think they're done yet. Atlanta for KD. Wow. Um, yeah. One last thing, man, uh, on the way out DA. And this is, this feels like ancient history. Now that Gobert has been traded. Malcolm yeah. Brogdon was the biggest trade of the day. Uh, right, right. To Malcolm Brogdon of Boston. How big of, a, of, a, of an acquisition is that for the Celtics? The oh, reigning man. Eastern That's, Conference champion Celtics. I love it. I love it for the Celtics, man. I mean, Malcolm is, it would be, is the exact, to me, per, the, the absolute best guard that the Celtics could get for what they were offering. And I say mm -hmm. that because Malcolm is not a, he's not a, you know, a textbook point guard in terms of distributing and dishing and that sort of thing but he gets you you'll run your plays you'll be fine <laughs> you know what i mean like he can get you into your stuff he can score he can shoot it well enough he's, he's great getting to the cup it takes some of the it takes some of the ball handling pressure off of marcus smart because we saw i mean look it's no it's no disrespect to marcus smart but you know the self you know the warriors kind of exposed that a little bit boston was real kind of random offensively during the finals for so many long stretches, whether it was Smart or Tatum handling the ball, you give the ball to Michael Brogdon, that, that problem solved. Um, and so, and he's just a, a tough veteran guy. I, I love the trade from them. If they add Gallinari, as everyone expects they're going to, um, they have really, I think, fortified the, their weak spot, which was their bench, uh, and, and have yeah. a very good bench now going forward. Um, so great, great trade for, for Brad Stevens in Boston. In my life as a driver, I've had three Nissan Maximus. I love Nissan Maximus. Malcolm Brock is a Nissan Maximus, man. Yeah. Like, he's just, you know, I mean, he ain't flashy. You know, you ain't putting no rims on it. But, you know, it's going to get you from point A to point B. Right. And you're going you to feel good about yourself while you're riding it. I'm telling you, you're going to feel good about it. You're going to be like, you know what? I'm straight. You know I'm what? Good. I'm good. I don't need that. We got I, I, I don't know. Why I got to invest a whole bunch of money in a car? You know what I'm right. saying? It just gives this right. transportation and depreciates when you come off the line. You ain't driving no Nissan Maxima, nah. <laughs> no, I've said I've, I, you're right. I said I had a Nissan Maxima. <laughs> I did it. What DA, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Love you, bro. Appreciate thank you, you. bro. Y'all better be Let reading him in the play. athletic. Ain't, no, ain't nobody like him. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.